And we thought we would be able to rank this uh, for that keyword. We were a bit naive back then, to say the least. So this didn't work for a year straight. We were building links, didn't work. It didn't make any sense, actually, that it would work. Uh, and then we figured out, OK, this doesn't work. We need to do something. We created this into a blog post format, included different competitors of ours as well within this piece. Uh, to, to make it uh, as unbiased as possible, because at the end of the day, with our content, we want to provide the most value uh, to our readers. Before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, Ahrefs. Ahrefs provides you with an all-in-one SEO toolset that does everything from run tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part, you can now use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content, and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrefs.com awt and sign up for free. And now, back to today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SaaS SEO Show. I'm your host, George Hasiotis, and today I'm very happy to be joined by a friend of mine, Nick Dimitriou, who is the head of growth at Musant, a site course company. And um, I guess that besides being an amazing uh, professional uh, with a, uh, an amazing and unparalleled work ethic uh, and, you know, Besides all that, uh, Nick is a, is a good friend of mine, and I'm very happy to be joined by him and uh, having this discussion about um, con marketing and SEO for uh, SaaS companies. Nick, welcome to the show. Hello, okay. Nice. Uh, thank you for having me. Of course. So, um, before we get started, uh, I would like to have um, to know for people who don't know you, uh, because I know a couple of things, uh, but I would like to know uh, a few things about your background. Uh, if you could share a couple of things about your journey and what brought you to uh, where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So I'll take it from the beginning really quick, though. So I studied computer science, so I have all the analyt analytical and problem solving skills someone needs but I don't know how to code at all, so don't ask me any technical questions. And then I transitioned to project management, I did a degree there, and that's where I got all my kind of organizational skills and being able to lead projects with uh, hard deadlines and stuff like that. So taking all this through education and trying to apply them to, to, the, to the workplace pretty much. And uh, here we are, four years after uh, doing all this, uh, leading an amazing team, amazing teams actually, across uh, different kind of uh, channels. So yeah, that's it pretty much. Okay, so um, you are the head of growth at Musant, which is a, an email marketing software. Could you please share a couple of things about Musant for people who uh, don't know the tool, uh, what Musant is, and um, I would say who gets the most value out of the product as well? Yeah, for sure. So as you said, Musen is an email marketing and marketing automation software. It's really similar to MailChimp, uh, but we're on steroids when it comes to features, in, in, in a sense at least. So due to the nature of, the, of, of those products in this industry, it's, it's really easy to target different personas, like completely different personas. So uh, we tend to go towards e-commerce because we have the marketing automation suite, which means that we're able to track users on an e-commerce store and then trigger different automations like card abandonment, uh, emails, and then retrieve those uh, people that leave and increase the, uh, the revenue of, this, of those stores. But we, we can also target bloggers that they run a blog and they want to distribute their content through email marketing. So we give them all the tools like sign up forms, landing pages to increase their email lists and then create uh, ad hoc campaigns and promote their content. So pretty much there's a lot of people that can use our software, but we tend to go towards e-commerce because we offer an amazing suite of uh, automations. I think we have one of the most, uh, let's say, uh, robust and extensive list of uh, triggers. So a lot of people can do a lot of things if they know what they're doing. 
So I would say e-commerce uh, stores, they get the most value of a tool like ours. It requires a, a little bit of effort, but uh, if it's done correctly, the, the return is uh, amazing, as we know, for email marketing. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks for explaining. Now, I know that you joined the team uh, at Musant as a growth marketer back in 2018. And I would like to know how things were back then uh, for the company from a content SEO uh, standpoint. Uh, were the company, uh, was the company involved in content SEO? Uh, was there organic visibility? Was there uh, organic traffic? Uh, and was there any results from, from the organic efforts? Or was it a blank canvas and you had to, to start from, from scratch, uh, essentially? Uh, so so th there were some motions in play. Uh, there were pretty much, uh, let's say, let's create a couple of blog posts and see what uh, will happen. Uh, and pretty much nothing happened in terms of bottom line uh, results, uh, revenue, uh, uh, revenue wise, actually. Uh, so there, there were some visibility. We had some pretty interesting topics that we were ranking fairly high, but they weren't producing uh, results in a meaningful way, let's say. So it was brand awareness mostly. Uh, but yeah, that, that was pretty much it initially. There, there wasn't much involved, not a lot of thought, just churning out content. Hopefully it will stick and it will rank, but uh, no results. Uh, that's when we kind of came in uh, in 2018 and tried to implement a more robust strategy when it comes to distribution because content production was okay there was a lot of things to be improved but distribution was the blank canvas uh, the, the company wasn't doing anything in regards to uh, building uh, mentions of muslim.com resources out there uh, they were only doing the usual stuff like sharing it on social and sharing it via email, but nothing that will actually move the needle on an organic uh, level. So yeah, that was it pretty much. I guess that to, to achieve something uh, organically, and uh, I guess for every other uh, marketing function and channel, you need to have a team. And I would like to, to know what was the team like back then, back when you joined the company? And um, how did you uh, think about team structure. Um, how did you approach hiring and hiring based on the goals that we have as, as a company? Um, I'd like to know uh, more specifically whether or not uh, you tied the goals that you had as a, as a growth marketer and you know, later on um, as, as the head of growth with specific roles uh, when it comes to your team. Um, and yeah, how is the team structured and whether or not you uh, took the, the goals that you had and tied them into roles that you had to develop and hire for? Yeah, so initially when I joined the company, it was me, uh, one content writer and one designer. That was it pretty much. Uh, so the, there was a lot of things to learn actually. So for a year, uh, I was doing a lot of research, trying to figure things out uh, when it comes to content production, as well as uh, off-page SEO mostly. That's where we specialize a lot. Uh, after a year, we started the hiring. So I tried to find, uh, with the help of uh, our co-founder, Yanis, I tried to find someone that is close to being as good as me, let's say, not to sound too cocky here, uh, but we needed someone with uh, my kind of skill set as well to help me build the foundation. So I, I didn't immediately go and, let's say, hire content writers. We need to put out content. So we found uh, some, uh, an amazing person, which right now leads the organic team, actually, George. He's amazing. Uh, when he joined, uh, we started building the core functions of uh, of page SEO. At this point, uh, we weren't focusing on how we produce content. That wasn't our job spec that back then. So we focused on uh, creating an amazing process when it comes to uh, off page SEO. So we started figuring out things, doing manual outreach, doing automatic outreach with different tools, 
uh, we found some amazing tools out there that helped us a lot. Uh, we use Ahrefs like, like crazy. Uh, so we started figuring out what we need. So to, to build the SEO team, specifically the off-page SEO team, we, we figured out that we need someone to do the outreach, pretty standard. Then this person will feed all the opportunities. Let's say if we're doing just posting, we'll feed all those opportunities to, to the writers. So we, we started like that. Initially, it was just me doing the outreach and writing the guest posts, uh, which is not really efficient. I wasn't able to do much uh, when it comes to guest post production. But uh, we, we start breaking down, all, breaking down all the process. So we need outreach. So we hire for outreach. So we hire someone that does outreach dedicatedly. Then this person feeds uh, all the opportunities to the content team. The content team does all the production. Then they give this uh, deliverable to the outreach person and then uh, they send it to, to the third party websites hopefully they get published that's the end goal uh, so we pretty much build a streamlined process it's, it's pretty much like a factory let's say here everyone does their function and we see the end results we understood that it's going to take some time but uh, to, to produce the results we wanted uh, but uh, yeah, it, it really helped us to, to be like, okay, we need one person to do outreach, we need three people to do the con writing. There, there, there cannot be a way for, to hire someone that does both of those uh, tasks at the same time. Although we currently have uh, a team member that does both. Uh, and we do this uh, in order to uh, check if we can have a better return uh, after writing the guest posts, for example. Because a, the problem with the guest posting process, in my opinion, for the whole industry, is writing a ton of guest posts and none of them getting published. And we thought that it might be the disconnect between the communicator and the writer. So we try to create a, a hybrid role. So besides building the team step by step, we try to kind of innovate in this way to be more efficient, uh, let's say. So we did that and we're able to kind of, you know, currently we have two people doing outreach and we have uh, three writers uh, writing uh, articles to, to promote uh, our resources pretty much. So yeah, th that was the short story, let's say. Obviously there's a lot of uh, things in play to consider when hiring for these roles because in my opinion, these tasks and these functions are really tedious, it, they take a lot of time and the, the, you need to keep the, the people involved motivated and always uh, show them the bigger picture rather than sending tons of emails, communicate with a ton of random people out there. So that's my main concern, making sure that we communicate the bigger picture because this process is, is really, really hard and it's also really hard to show the results to the upper management uh and obviously you know get them to buy in into more complex and more complicated projects so yeah that was it pretty much i, I would thanks thanks for the the amazing answer by the way but uh, i would like to know whether or not you have noticed any correlations between the character of a team member and the role they are good at uh, and i'm only asking because you have mentioned uh, different uh roles like outreach content writer and so on and what i have in mind is that for example an extrovert uh, would be great, as I see it at least, for email outreach, while uh, an introvert uh, may be better for a con writer position. I don't know, have you noticed any correlations like that? So, yeah, I actually haven't, to be honest with you. So, I, I know it sounds like this would be the logical thing to happen, but we've hired from so many different fields of expertise that I don't think this actually applies. So. Currently, we have people that have studied actually biomedical sciences and they're doing outreach. These people are, you know, in a lab all day. Uh, so you can't say that, that they are extroverted in the traditional sense, let's say. Uh, but these people that are within, let's say, the, uh, these fields of, um, of uh, let's say, kind of, uh, you know, uh, more technical, they, they, they have the analytical aspect behind. Uh, behind their mind so they're able to figure out patterns and what is outreach pattern recognition actually to, to figure out exactly what this person needs and then you immediately serve it 
So they are able to identify patterns. That's what they do in biomedical sciences. They identify patterns. So it makes sense to hire from this field. Why not? Uh, so I don't think I've seen this, but I'm mostly going not in the sense of introverted, extroverted. I'm going in terms of qualities. Like, for example, we need people with resilience, a lot of resilience to do these tasks. They can be introverted, extroverted, I don't really care. Uh, but they need to be resilient to succeed in these tasks and they need to be resilient from the, let's say, the pressures that, the pressure that might arise from the upper management when we do not produce the results because SEO is not that predictable, let's say. So we might do a ton of things, none of them will work. These people, myself included, uh, I'm not upper management, by the way. Um, we need to be resilient. We need to understand and we need to make sure that we communicate this to upper management. So we set the expectations uh, the way it should be for a channel uh, like this. So, yeah, that's the kind of short answer. I guess that we are on the same boat. Uh, the resilience is definitely something that you need, you need when you enter uh, an industry like, um, like ours, con uh, marketing, SEO, marketing in general. Um, I would like to shift gears a bit and discuss uh, con SEO strategy. And I would like to know how you approach um, uh, con SEO strategy for uh, Musant. Was it that, and if you want, you can take it from the beginning or you can uh, take us to where you are at right now. Uh, but I would like to know how you first thought about it in the sense of, what keywords are we going to go after? Are we going to build a couple of feature pages, uh, AKA use case pages and, you know, build a bunch of links to those pages and call it a day? Or are we going to take a, a different approach uh, and try to build more content on a specific topic like email marketing, for example, uh, so that we can build topical authority, which is something that we missed back when I joined the company. Uh, so that further down the line, we have the, um, a chance of getting visibility for the, the, the feature pages and the, the, the use case pages that we actually want. Uh, and also, uh, was there any other uh, categories of, of keywords that you paid uh, and pay attention to and that have worked really well for you? So, yeah, I'll, I'll take it from the beginning because it was uh, really interesting to say the least. Uh, so, uh, initially, uh, for example, when I joined, we were looking at pure volume of search traffic. So, we were just looking at that and we were hoping that if we run high, revenue will come. It didn't come, obviously. Uh, for example, if you check uh, the keyword email marketing, uh, obviously a lot of people are searching for this, but even if you run uh, for, for this keyword, uh, I imagine there will not be a lot of revenue tied to that keyword. Maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we ever reach the top three results there. But I imagine uh, there will be some listen on those keywords, but not much. Uh, so initially, we're just looking at volume and we're like, okay, this makes sense. It's a, it has the word email in the keyword, so it must be in our industry. Uh, so we're just looking at that. Uh, and obviously our competitors. So we're checking the competitors uh, and we're producing content that we thought would be ideal for, the, for our ICP. Uh, but we quickly figured out that we were just putting out really vague content out there. The structure was there for the content. It made sense. We were targeting the right uh, keywords and stuff like that. We're doing a, a lot of internal link building and, uh, and all those fun stuff. But uh, the, the, there wasn't uh, a, pretty much a business KPI attached to that, other than let's say, let's bring tons of traffic to the website. So after a bit of time, we came across the uh, KOB analysis. Uh, from uh, Seeds Media. That's when things became more clear in terms of uh, prioritization, actually. So we took all this uh, into account and uh, started, you know, leveraging this analysis uh, and started working on that, actually. So just trying to find a ton of keywords, put them through this analysis, prioritize them, and start working on writing them. Uh, so initially we did that. After that, we were able to create a much better content calendar, let's say, uh, that we knew it would produce results. Uh, we only needed some time to obviously distribute the content, 
through the off-page uh, activities. After we did that, we saw crazy uh, amounts of success actually in terms of lead gen as well as revenue. So we started uh, targeting keywords, for example, like alternative keywords, uh, MailChimp alternative, for example. So we, we create a blog post around, no, initially we didn't create the blog post, let me give you the whole story actually here. So we created the standard Musen versus MailChimp kind of page. Uh, and we named the URL slug MailChimp alternatives for some reason. I don't know why, it was Musen versus MailChimp actually. And we thought we would be able to rank this uh, for that keyword. We were a bit naive back then to say the least. So this didn't work for a year straight. We were building links, didn't work. It didn't make any sense actually that it will work. Uh, and then we figured out, okay, this doesn't work. We need to do something. We created this into a blog post format, included different competitors of ours as well within this piece uh, to, to make it as unbiased as possible. Because at the end of the day, with our content, we want to provide the most value uh, to our readers. We, I don't care if they sign up for a Muslim account. I don't care at all. I just want them to take the most informed decision down the line. Hopefully, this decision is them trying Muslim. If, they, if it, our software solves the problem, then they, uh, they will hopefully become a paying customer of ours. So that was the initial kind of thought process. So we used the KOB analysis to sum it up pretty much. Uh, and then prioritized the production through, uh, through a proper content calendar that we had in place. So, yeah, th that was it. We saw great results. Uh, and yeah, we're you know, hoping to get more out of this. Would you say that the page on MailChimp alternatives, the way it was initially structured, didn't work because it didn't satisfy, didn't match search intent? That I'm looking for MailChimp alternatives. Um, and by the way, we, we, did, we conducted a study on this specific topic on uh, alternative keywords for SaaS companies. We will make sure to drop it in the show notes. Uh, but I'm looking for such a keyword. Chances are that I'm looking for a, a short list or at least of um, alternatives to that solution. But instead, um, I see a you know, comparison page. Do you think that... And, when you made the change, obviously you, you, start, you started getting results. Do you think that there was a, an intent mismatch there? Uh, and this is why the, the page initially didn't work? 100%. Uh, people, they were searching for a compact list of tools. They weren't searching for Muslim versus males at that point in their search journey. So the moment we figured this out, it took a bit of time, obviously. I'm relatively new to the SEO industry, actually. I've only had four years of experience, which is nothing, apparently. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was 100% a mismatch on the search intent there. We thought with a nice, well-constructed page, we can win. Uh, but obviously, Google is uh, smarter than that. Uh, and it can figure out uh, whether this is actually valuable for the searchers. One future study that we are discussing internally and that we want to do at some point is essentially based on the facts that on the assumption that when there is a brand a very big <coughs> brand a well-known brand and um, you can see this brand somewhere in the top 10 in the search results and you happen to rank in the same you know SERP uh, even above this well-known brand that it may get a click. And here I could, uh, I could share Amazon, for example. Let's say that you uh, compete with Amazon uh, for a set of keywords. Chances are that even if you rank higher, uh, just because it's Amazon, they will get the click. Now, you entered the space where there are some very big players, um, the equivalents of Amazon, let's say, uh, in email marketing, such as MailChimp, okay? Um, and I would like to know whether or not you have seen uh, things like that happen in SERPs that you have visibility for and you may rank in high enough positions, uh, you don't get as many clicks. Is this the case? Have you, have you noticed any, anything like that? So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting in our case because I don't actually, uh, this would be <laughs> a kind of outside of the box uh, answer here. I don't look at the competition that much when it comes to uh, SERP results. I don't think we're competing with these companies there. 
to to be 100% honest with you i think we're competing with uh, uh, review websites and the affiliate marketers out there so i don't look at the competition in that sense unless there is a lot of uh, competitors of ours in the in the specific keyword we target so i'm what i'm trying to say is that i'm looking at the competition at a dynamic level i'm taking this keyword that's my competitors i'm taking a different keyword that's my competitors so we look at it that way and this allows us to adapt and be more agile on the uh, on the kind of you know uh, let's say off-paid uh, off-paid seo kind of activities we do uh, so yeah uh, i would say that in some keywords it's uh, really hard to beat those guys for example we're trying to rank for email marketing actually uh, companies of our size let's say they will never go after a keyword like this so i'm doing it purely out of ego reasons here <laughs> I just want to get this uh, keyword done for us and have it on my resume. I don't know. Uh, so it's a bit of an ego play here and we're almost there. Uh, we're actually on the second page for that keyword. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, when we reach uh, this uh, top results for this keyword, I'll have a more definitive answer for you, for your question. But so far, we're not seeing uh, that the competition, the actual software competition, let's call them, they're targeting the same keywords as uh, us, let's say. I think that this dis distinction between these are my business competitors and search competitors is very important. And it's a point that we always try to make to our clients as well, that you know what, you think that you compete with these folks, but as a matter of fact, you are competing with these folks and many other websites such as review sites and um, um, affiliate sites that, that you mentioned. And shameless plug, once again, I will mention the studies that we did, but two of our studies, uh, one of them in software keywords, for software keywords, and the other one for alternative keywords, prove the fact that SERPs are saturated by uh, review sites like G2, Captera, uh, and affiliate sites, uh, which is which I guess changes the perspective. Uh, it shows you that you have to play a different type of game if you want to, to be present, uh, let's say. But speaking of affiliate sites and review sites, uh, or review sites more specifically, I would like to know, because I guess that as Musen, you know, um, was growing, uh, you, you managed to get more and more reviews on, on those sites. And I would like to know whether or not you have seen any uh, correlations between building reviews on uh, sites like G2 and Captera uh, and uh, improved organic performance. So yeah, there's definitely, that there might be a correlation. I'm not 100% sure to be honest with you, uh, because obviously as you grow the organic traffic, you get more people involved and invest in your software and if you have the right mechanisms in play you can increase the the production of those uh, reviews and testimonials they give on those websites so i think they work in parallel but i think uh, the the reviews do not drive organic traffic organic traffic drives reviews that's my kind of uh, short answer here uh, and from the Muslim perspective, we just try to make uh, our customers more incentivized to give us reviews and, and obviously try to get uh, as much customer feedback as we can to improve the software uh, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the day. And in some cases, we've taken specific uh, bits and pieces from those testimonials, let's say, and added them within blog posts to increase conversions. Uh, specifically blog posts, not landing pages. So we have blog posts when we feature motion as a software, we might incorporate like a pretty cool kind of slider with different uh, kind of testimonials from people. For, for example, we have a lot of people that have moved from MailChimp to motion. Uh, so we use these testimonials in our, uh, in our articles uh, when we mention MailChimp alternatives, for example. Uh, so this allows us to increase the conversion rate of those uh, articles and make all, obviously the experience much better because uh, people that are reading the article, they might get an idea from this person or they at least give it, give, for example, Moosen the try uh, and see if it fits their business case. 
So yeah, I don't think there's a direct correlation, but I think organic drives uh, the, the, the production of reviews, let's say. I like that. And I like the tip as well uh, about integrating uh, some of these reviews into blog posts. Now, one thing that I find interesting about email marketing is how you, um, how you manage to get customers, because I guess that the size of the, the email list plays, plays a role, uh, plays a role in the LTV of that customer, um, and so on. And I, I had this question, like how these tools, email marketing software can get customers with bigger email lists. Um, would you say that there are any keywords or patterns, uh, that indicate that, you know what, someone who is looking for that chances are that they are a bigger player, uh, they are a bigger company or um, they are a bigger organization with a bigger email list. And chances are that if they join us, we will have um, a significantly higher uh, LTV compared to uh, another guy who's just starting out with email marketing. Um, any insights you can share uh, with regards to that? Yeah, for sure. Oh, so that's an amazing question, actually, for, for our industry, because that's what, what, what we're trying to to, to figure out actually at the moment. Uh, so it's, the, the easy part is that if you want to bring people that are new to email marketing, it's really easy. These people are probably searching for how to build an email list from scratch. Okay, so you know that these people probably are just starting out their journey and they just want to build uh, an email list. Uh, so these keywords are really easy to find, really easy to actually target. Uh, there are a ton of uh, amazing resources, amazing uh, processes to, to, to increase your email list. So obviously it's good to educate those people because if you educate them, then they jump in on your product and then they try to increase their email list. And as they grow their email list, you, you increase your LTV pretty much. Uh, so it, it, one play is that, educating them to increase their email list and hopefully in the future the, the LTV is gonna uh, increase. But if you're trying to find, let's say, someone that has a pretty big list immediately, and then they switch from X software to Y software, uh, then I think you need to check from what I've found so far is that these people will probably search for email uh, list hygiene, email list cleaning, uh, validating their email list, um, taking complaints, uh, all the kind of technical aspects, entering SPF and DKIM kind of things. So if these people search for those terms, I believe that they, they probably have a fair understanding of the email marketing uh, landscape. And uh, immediately I think they're qualified to be a pretty good user of uh, our platform in this given example. But hopefully they also have a big and uh, healthy email list because that's what we're trying to find. Besides them having a, a, a big list, we, we need them to have a clean list as well to use our infrastructure and not harm uh, other uh, kind of, uh, you know, people that are using the software. Uh, so it's, it's a bit tricky to identify them. Uh, what I've seen others do, they usually create resources and then uh, if they download the specific resource, they think that this customer has a pretty big list because obviously they might ask for the list size on the form. Uh, so that's an easy kind of, you know, lead uh, uh, scoring kind of mechanism for our industry. Uh, but obviously on, on a search level, I think people that are searching for those technical keywords, let's call them, they probably have uh, larger email lists if you want to be, you know, <laughs> to oversimplify this uh, answer, let's say. I like that. And I think that we found the, the highlight of this, this episode with this answer. <laughs> uh, as we are approaching the end, uh, I have a couple more questions that I'd like to, to ask you. Uh, the first one is uh, with regards to alternative pages. Uh, we all know them. Uh, we all use them. Uh, for better or worse and I would like to know and we can all accept at the same time that it's pretty difficult to build uh, backlinks to alternative pages because let's face it no one wants to link back to those pages but at the same time if you want to be competitive for alternative keywords you have to build links back to those pages and I would like to to ask whether or not you have found any 
techniques, let's say, tactics that work well when it comes to building links back to, to those pages? So yeah, it's, it's definitely really hard, uh, especially if you add your own software within the list. So it gets extra tricky uh, to actually do it. So the, the easy way to start working on that is uh, to do guest posts, actually. That's where you're able to, to you know, produce the content yourself There's, and then incorporate this in a natural way that uh, hopefully the editor of the third party website will accept. Uh, so I think guest posts is the easy answer to your question. Uh, I think the, there are some other uh, things we've tried. So we tried creating uh, tables with the alternatives and then linking the resource as a source to the image. So we've tried that, it didn't work. <laughs> um, because it's it's really, you know, in your face kind of thing within this article. So you cannot really do that. Uh, so I, I would say yes, it's the easiest way and it's the safest way in my opinion and obviously it's gonna take time um, to, to see the results. And uh, yeah, I think it's a matter of convincing the, the management team that this will take time, but the results will be amazing. I can testify to that. I've seen the results. It makes sense to actually go after those things, even if they take a bit of time. For us, it took us two years uh, and we did a ton of mistakes along the way. Uh, so yeah, I think yes, is the way to go. There are some tricks to do as well, but I'm not a big fan of tricks. I just want to be, uh, you know, like let's write content. Hopefully, we incorporate this resource. If we don't, it's fine. We just want to produce content and promote the the Muslim brand out there. Uh, if we don't build links to the alternative page, that's fine. A quick and, and more intermediate tip that I could give actually is that uh, build links to uh, more educational pages and then from these pages build internal links to your alternative pages. So I think it's more of an internal links play here in combination with guest posts when the opportunity arises. That makes sense. Last question that I have for you, Nick. Uh, you managed to get the website the website's organic traffic, according to AHOS, at least uh, above 100K uh, monthly, monthly visits. My question is, how do you get from 100K to 1 million? Have you thought about that? Any, any plans uh, that yeah. you can share with us? Uh, I think about that every day <laughs> that I go to sleep, actually. Uh, so yeah, I'll give you the utopian answer. That's my, the pipe dream, let's say. Uh, I want to do more productized in incentives, like create simple products, not like actual software. Like, for example, we have an, an amazing kind of subject line enhancer. So it's called Refine. So we we'll create a page where people can add their subject lines and then they get recommendations to improve them. Uh, so I want to create more of those. I think this can play a big role into us reaching the 1 million mark, but obviously we'll need to create a lot of those tools. Uh, the, the more uh, conservative answer, let's say, would be to scale our content production. That's, I think, the, the most sensible way to go about answering this question. So uh, obviously scaling, but not like hire 10 writers and just start putting out content. Let's say we find all the keywords and we start putting out content. I, I wouldn't go about it that way. I'll incorporate some sort of product owner hierarchy with our content. So we will go top of funnel. So we have a team that goes top of funnel. We have a team that goes mid funnel and we have a team that goes bottom funnel. So these three teams, all of them are writers with their respected uh, kind of editors uh, above them. So. Each of them have a specific KPI. The top of funnel is brand awareness traffic. The mid funnel is education, trying to drive them to the bottom funnel. Bottom funnel is like all the alternative pages, all the comparison pages, all the kind of people. So I think the hierarchy, this hierarchy will help us uh, reach uh, a million, hopefully. 
But you never know actually with SEO, there might be a Google update or a Bing update if you're into Bing. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, things will change. So whatever I say in this given point in time might not have any effect in two years time. So uh, I think we need to be dynamic and be versatile uh, when it comes to, you know, figuring out how we go from a hurricane to a million. Uh, it's not a straight line, it's 100% and more like this and probably go down a lot <laughs> and then go up. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it actually. And that's a great, thing to, that's a great way to, to wrap things up. Uh, many interesting insights for people who uh, listen to this episode. Um, one last question before we go, where can people find out more about you and get in touch? Yeah, so you guys can find me on LinkedIn. So just search for Nick Dimitriou or search for Musen on LinkedIn and then follow the page as well because my social media manager will appreciate that. <laughs> that that's great. Nick, Nick, thank you very much for being on the show and hopefully we will be able to bring you back on uh, when you will reach the and hit the 1 million mark uh, in, in monthly organic visits. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Before you go, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, Ahrefs. Ahrefs provides you with an all-in-one SEO toolset that does everything from rank tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part, you can now use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content, and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrefs.com awt and sign up for free.